Charlie Tarra, a bush tracker, was a rare character, a capable, friendly and intelligent guide and companion to the early explorers and settlers. He was of the Bora Bora tribe. Initially, he served for Lachlan McAllister from Clifton Homestead. In 1838, he attached himself to James MacArthur, son of Hannibal. In March, April, May 1840, Charlie was a member of Strzelecki's expedition to Gippsland. The group was on the brink of starvation after the party ran out of food in their trek across the rugged terrain of Gippsland, through thicket, gale and downpour. They may have perished in the forested ridge tops and valleys, but they were saved thanks to the bush skills of Charlie Tarra, who fed them raw koala meat. Described in the song, which we will hear in a moment, without him they would be stone dead. Not only James MacArthur, but Riley too, lauded Charlie's bushcraft. William Brodrib also praised Charlie for procuring them animal food. Charlie Tarra took part in several expeditions. Not long after Strzelecki's group arrived in Melbourne, he took part in the salvage operation to recover the party's abandoned horses and Strzelecki's collections of specimens. He also proved to be very useful in William Brodrib's explorations in Gippsland. Earlier, he accompanied the first party of settlers who entered Port Albert from Melbourne by sea. He also accompanied Mr Townsend, the surveyor, in his survey of Gippsland and overland through Monaro to Sydney. Charlie Tarra, while in Sydney, stayed with the Hannibal MacArthur family. He seems to have been especially attached to James's younger brother, Charlie. So much so, he even adopted his name. One day, Charlie MacArthur promised Tara to show him how he came by sea from Europe. He took Tara to Watson's Bay, where the family had a beautiful cottage, Cloverly. A funny incident occurred there, described by Charlie's younger sister, Emmeline, in her memoirs. Charlie was brought to Cloverly after dark, and next morning, blindfolded, was led to the edge of the cliff. And when he was allowed to gaze at the sea, he got very puzzled. So, Master Charlie came this way? How come I do not see his tracks? Charlie Tarra must have been a likeable guy with a great sense of humour. Charlie died in 1847 at Richlands on the farm belonging to brothers William and James MacArthur. After he was invited to visit his Bura Bura clanmates, he made the trip but came back very sick and died of tuberculosis. When he was dying, his master was not with him. His last moments were devoted to voicing kind messages to James MacArthur and his family. Two years later, James MacArthur stated in Parliament, It gives me great pleasure to place that man on record to whose devoted fidelity I, in more ways than one, owe my life. Charlie Tarra became a part of Australian folklore. His name is often mentioned by historians. We can see his image on a contemporary painting by Warren Curry. His name is also mentioned on several memorial plaques in Gippsland and in Jindabyne. Tarra's memorials include Tarrabulga National Park and Tarra Valley Rainforest Walk. The town Tarraville and Tarra River were also named after him. He was also immortalised in a song written and composed in 2009 by a Polish poet from Perth, Adam Fiala. Today, the song will be performed for the first time by an Aussie musician. Please welcome Tom Kendall. <laughs> Charlie Tara, you are my friend. You helped me to climb on so big a mountain. Hey, Charlie Tara, you're a super guy. I'm going with you because you are so smart. You got me koala, you got me a wombat, you got me Firebird and water, of course You gave me a hand when I was in trouble 
And without you I would just be stone dead Hey Charlie Tara, you are my friend No matter how far my country is from yours We both together are human souls You are Aboriginal and I am a Pole You got me koala, you got me a wombat You got me Liar bird and water, of course You gave me a hand when I was in trouble And without you I would just be stone dead Hey Charlie Tara Hey Charlie Tara Hey, Charlie Tara.